As a kid, I was never really too fond of spiders. For as simple as it sounds, spider silk has a broad range of researchers. You've got everyone from people who study spiders and their morphology and their species, down to people like me who study how to make the silk without the spider. When you see a spider dropping down from your ceiling, you know, on a single, what looks like a single fiber, it's actually two fibers together, and that's major ampullate silk. It's also the, um, the threads that anchor a web to their environment. And this is, um, when you hear spider silk is stronger than steel and stronger than Kevlar, that's the silk they're talking about. It's a fantastic example of a, a place where nature has evolved a material that far exceeds anything we can make with chemical engineering techniques. And because of this, uh, we'd like to make this material. We'd like to use it in everything from clothing to composites in aircraft and cars uh, to medical devices. So a whole range of interesting technologies. And this comes from two properties. One, the mechanical properties of spider silk are far superior. So if I, if I stretch it, if I have a fiber of spider silk and stretch it, uh, it's both stiffer and more extensible, uh, it's stretchier than uh, any other material I can find out there uh, and buy commercially. Second, spider silk, unlike other medical devices we make today, uh, doesn't react with the human body. The immune system doesn't recognize it as foreign and doesn't attack it. No one has made a successful, what we call native quality, uh, a synthetic silk as good as what the spider makes. That was the first thing people tried, uh, was to take spiders, uh, grow them in high density. If you put them too close together, they're cannibalistic and they'll eat each other, they're territorial. So a big factory full of spiders is just not, it just doesn't work. 91 was the first time you can find someone who was trying to make synthetic spider silk uh, completely without the spider. Uh, and everyone started in coli. Turns out E. coli is probably not the best host for spider silk. Everyone's got their favorite at this point. There's a famous company called Nexia, and they were making recombinant spider silk in goat's milk. Um, so they would have a transgenic goat that would make the spider silk and then secrete it into the milk and they would collect it from there. There's groups that try to do it in plants with the idea that you'd harvest a crop of potatoes and you have to separate the, the protein anyway when you harvest potatoes uh, and process them and you would just get the silk as a byproduct. There's also people who try silkworms. Um, the idea is that you replace the silkworm silk gene with the spider silk gene. It's a great idea. It's unclear if it's gonna work all the way yet. I happen to think um, other microbial systems are good. We study the spiders simultaneously. The spiders play an important role both in, in motivation and uh, doing the science has the nice advantage of we can look at the spiders every day and say they can do it, we should be able to do it. Biology can solve this problem.